Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at a brass hybrid locomotive from Broadway Limited. It's the CNO Class L1 Hudson. This is number 490. You can find it in the Baltimore and Ohio Museum. Let's take a look at what you get for an MSRP of $699.99 starting right now. Boxing at the suggestion of a few viewers, but I want to show you what's in the box, which is the Chesapeake and Ohio L1 here. This is number 493. It's just a picture and it gives you some information on the locomotive history. So I'll go like that and you can read it instead of me doing extra editing work and adding it in like I've done before. Oh yeah, nice nice and lazy way. But uh, there you have it, both sides of that. And then you got the exploded parts diagram. If you need to order parts from BLI, kind of shows you how it's put together as well. Broadway Limited's new warranty, limited one year. And the operating manual for Paragon 3. So this is a brass hybrid. Operating manual, by the way, has functions, etc. But the brass hybrid is mostly brass in um, composition and then you know just a little bit of plastic mixed in there not like a full brass locomotive but obviously the price has to reflect the brass that's used let's take a closer detailed look i'm not going to do the 360 because it really has the tender attached and it's too long for the rotating platform and so we're just going to do it old school and take a closer look just while it's on the track here so we're going handheld with the camera here to be up close. You got an LED headlight up close. You have the number boards up top. Uh, the number boards aren't lit. Classification lights aren't lit. The dummy coupler does swing around. It's usable, you can connect it. You've got a coupler cut lever. Crew access stairs with safety tread stamped. Stamped safety tread. Uh, you've got the handrails up here. Got the smokestack, which is operating puffing smoke synchronized. You have top rivet detail with hatches. You've got the roof hatch back here, and just peek in the truck in the actual cab real quick. You've got two cab figure figures, a boiler pack head detail, which is hard to see, but it's in there, very detailed. You have the cab curtains. Cap sunshade, curtains are nice. Deck plate is almost flat at that angle. 490 on the side. Beautiful finish on this locomotive. Got those light covered driver wheels, side rod detail. The old Chesapeake and Ohio emblem right there. And your lead trucks there as well. Now this connects with a prong that fits together and a wire harness with a male and female connection. You see the truck detail on the Chesapeake and Ohio tender. You have a back LED light, crew access ladder, the light plumbing for the electrical connection to the light. Hatches on the tender and another access ladder, ladder to the coal load, which is not a depleting coal load. Somebody had asked that on my Facebook page. Metal couplers. Just a beautiful locomotive. Now, I've got no business buying one of these because it's not my era, but I totally did because it's a beautiful locomotive. I saw it in the Baltimore and Ohio Museum. You can see a video of my visit there a while back. And I, once the model, I was gonna buy a brass one, and then once this was announced, I was like, sweet, I can save a whole bunch of money and have a fully operational one. So there you have it. I've got a consist attached to it, but uh, one of the cars I forgot to buy, Walder's Paramarket 7 car set, and then an observation car from Athern. I also have one from River Rossi. I'm looking for one from Walder's, but just a beautiful locomotive. Let's check out operation. So not only is this a brass hybrid, but it's also 
a Paragon 3 locomotive, which means the Paragon 3 subwoofer, when it's close enough to the receiver, it will trigger that sound from the subwoofer that supplements the sound from the locomotive. I don't know at the current distance if it'll kick in, but I will demonstrate that at some point. All right, you power this on by simply going to address three and moving it. As you can see, there's steam coming out of the smokestack stack with the uh, synchronized puffing smoke. It just kind of pours out when it's stationary. LED headlight is Rule 17 lighting, so once I actually move it, it'll brighten up. And we're going to listen to some other sounds on this, starting with the bell. There's also a whistle play that kind of factors in there. You'll see that on the run by. Air pump or four. Water fuel at six. probably hear the Paragon subwoofer kicking in from time to time. Well, let's check some other sounds. There's maintenance sounds and other auxiliary sounds and the higher function. Place the switch in hand, throw it back and forth a couple times, line it main to main. Let me see if I can get you a signal. Okay, I'm working. They're, uh, they're trying to let you know something about that broken rail in the yard there, over. Alright, we'll be standing by. Thank you. Uh, So there you have a, a lot of the sounds, or at least a few of them. So there's also a, an alternate whistle in the function 22. So those are the two whistles that are easy access. There's also a CV change for whistles, which is 224 to 01 or 2. So I'm going to go through all three of those. There's the third whistle. So there you have the three whistles. And there's a lot of other sounds. 28 function, there's the ability to record and play macro. Which means you can do a pre-recorded run by with a whistle, you know, certain amount of whistle blasts, bells, etc. And then you can play that to where it goes around your layout. That's one Broadway limited feature that's great. Um, that's different from the rest of the manufacturers. So F7 turns off and on smoke. That's about it for functions. Let's go ahead and move this thing at slow speeds. Now I put the camera up by the subwoofer so you can hear the sounds and we're going to do the slow speed control in reverse first. One. You can pay attention to both the passenger cars and the locomotive to see the smoothness. 
There is lurch at slow speeds is what I've noticed. I hear that subwoofer. Two. Three. Four. Synchronized puffing smoke working great. And five. Note on the smoke, they don't come with fluid anymore. Something about customs. It's just not being able to, so you... There's some in there to run it for a little while, but you're going to have to add your own pretty soon. So there's five speed limit, speed steps. Um, you can see the drive rods, or side rods and the drive wheels. A little closer now. Okay, so now we're going to go forward, so that way you can see the drive rods. Side rods, I keep saying drive. Side rods and drive wheels in action up close at slow speeds. One speed step. Two. Three. Four and five. And then you notice when you stop, cab light goes on. And the crew you know, is doing whatever with the cab light on. I'm going to try to zoom in on this boiler backhead so you can see the detail it's peeking in through the cab there. Cab light is on because the locomotive is stopped. But just a well done locomotive. Just a couple nitpicks and I'll get to those in my final thoughts. We got some input to skip, pull, test, and wait. So that's basically it for the review. So I'm going to see if people like the pull test or I want it out. So I'm going to keep it out in this case. But I will tell you, I tried to pull a long UP consist of brass and plastic. That there was no chance that this thing should have moved and it moved it and it didn't stall out until it got to an area of the track where I run smoke a lot. So this thing has the normal pulling power that Broadway Limited is known best for. Well guys, that's going to wrap up the review of the Broadway Limited Chesapeake and Ohio Class L1 series steam locomotive. Again, this is 490. It's in the Baltimore and Ohio Museum. That's kind of why I went for it even though it's not really my era. But I will tell you this. The locomotive is beautiful. It's one of the most aesthetically pleasing locomotives I've seen. It's just one of those things you like looking at. And the fact that you got brass hybrid uh, gives you the opportunity to own this without having to go to the brass route, which was $2,000 plus dollars. And I think it has some great features. I'll tell you about the couple nitpicks I have. Slow speed, as you'll see on the run by, there's a little bit of lurching. As you speed up past five speed steps, it smooths out. I don't have the time to break this in enough to see if it's like a break-in issue or just out of the box so I simply show you what's out of the box. It very well could be a break-in issue. It's not even that noticeable or, or that important to me I should say. Um, the other issue is Paragon 3 receiver sometimes does not pick it up. Simple reset of the track power will fix it. I've only had that happen a couple times. Had this locomotive for a little while. Um, it just came out. I got it through Train World, but I didn't, I went ahead and played with it because it was of personal interest. I liked it, so I ran it and enjoyed it and put the consist together. I've been building this consist since August of last year, trying to get all the Chesapeake and Ohio uh, pair Marquette cars from Walders um, by, you know, diff buying on different eBay auctions and stuff like that. So the one car I forgot to order is on its way in, so it'll be at one short on the consist run by. But overall, 
outside of the Paragon 3, you know, issue, which has only happened a couple times in the lurching, I didn't see anything wrong with this locomotive. Now, um, price is $699.95 or $699.99, I can't remember, for MSRP. And I can tell you those that are still out there are going for about that. Um, there's not discounts uh, to be found because this is brass hybrid and it's high in demand like it was already sold out from Broadway they wouldn't even take any more orders at one point so I still provide these videos for you guys because I know there's hobby shops out there that have them and that you want to see what you're getting so the the very first priority is always the viewer um, and I know that some of you guys are still contemplating whether buy these online through auction websites like eBay or online retailers um, but overall I want to still show you guys what you're getting, and that's what I think you're getting. Don't worry about pull test. It's pretty good. Didn't do it, I know. Wait. Um, it's probably going to be absurd on a brass model. If you guys really need to know that badly, email me. But please be boisterous about what you think about having certain things in or out of reviews. Do you want the unboxings? Do you want the pull tests? Do you want the weights? Because the louder you guys get about whatever it is, is the more likely I'm, I'm looking at changing up these reviews. And I'm kind of undergoing a, a really deep, intense look at how to make these things better this summer. So does that mean adding more or taking away and making them shorter? That's the question I ask for you guys to answer in the comments below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.